right, so we got us a three door reach in freezer here made by True that's got issues. To say the least, he said it wasn't working very well. Well, it's got three pounds of pressure in it, and he said it's never leaked before. So we're getting ready to put a nitrogen test on this thing. We're gonna see what's going on with it. It's kind of had better days, so he's thinking about buying a new one. The coil's just uh, starting to grow some pants, um, so we may try to clean that out. But we're gonna go ahead and throw some nitrogen on it first. Let's see if uh, we can find a leak. He don't want to really fix it. He just wants to make sure it's not gonna leak out and a couple seconds you know so so we've got the whisper and we get the superior accutrack Give them both a shot. All right, let's see what we can find with these. So, it was making a popping noise in here when I was standing here for a second there. Now I'm not hearing it. It was just like a pop. This is where the gooseneck really comes in handy because you can get back in here. But usually the noise is going to bounce around. I'm not hearing any real hissing. No squealing. If you hit things or obviously if I talk it picks up those noises. It's not real obvious. I can I can hear something in there making a, a random like pop noise or whatever probably the oil. So let's go ahead and kick this thing on. A little harder to get into tight spots. Not really hearing anything. I've got it valved off there and it's not moving. I mean, it might have moved a little bit, but not much. So I don't know. It's good. I don't think there was enough refrigerant in it to set off the leak detector, but we can we can try it. No matter what you use, you know, either you've got these heavy duty looking things. Myself personally, I like these little earbuds, which these weren't real cheap, but they were Sony's. I think they were like 40 bucks, but this isolates the noise. You can hear when I say s -s -s S's, the little meter goes s -s 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 -s. so, um, but those work pretty good and you don't look like a total dork with the headphones on, but those are what I recommend. The things that come with them, you know, whether it be these ones or the other ones, these are not very good. Uh, this one does have a, a nozzle there, but that's if you've got a lot of noise and you need to narrow it down. All right, so we scanned it over with the electronic. Obviously, nothing went off. It only had three pounds of pressure in it originally. So we went ahead and reset the timer. See what kind of drop we've got. We've got a 0.1 so far, and it's not been even a minute. That sometimes ain't the most accurate thing in the world. I've seen tight systems lose a pound, so but, uh, we'll just watch it and see what happens. Usually half a pound to a pound, but over a 10-minute period of time, I've never seen it. But the, the quality of the sensors they've got in these things they never seem to hold well. We're going to go ahead and check out the ice cream machine and see if it, uh, why it's rattling so much. The belts are getting a little unevenly wore, meaning the rear belt is looser than what the front one was. Went ahead and checked the tension. These are auto tensioning uh, pulley system here, I should say, or bracket. And um, with one, they don't wobble at all. But with the one in the front closest to me, stretching the furthest, the one in the back sits there and wobbled pretty good. And I checked the alignment, made sure, you know, front to back was okay, it was. So just went and picked up some new belts. So I'll get some new brownings on there. 
and uh, see if that helps them out a little bit. It's kind of a rattle trap because they've got all this stainless steel here that just, you know, rattle, rattle, rattle. And you kind of get this stuff up here, you know, when it's doing its thing. So it mainly does it when the drive's doing, doing the turning. I added that before to try to help keep the uh, pressure against the back panel, but yeah, sometimes it don't matter. These ones here, you can actually take off the way that you're not supposed to because the spring will absorb the extra tension. Run that for a second and we'll recheck it. And they're not sitting there wobbling like crazy. This is a tension gauge. When you get on belts that run, you know, the 30 pound plus, that's when you need something like this, which does up to 120. Well, what does it do up to? 180 pounds and as little as about 30 pounds. Just hook the belt, it squeezes it. It'd be great if they come up with one of these for little belts. It did, you know, a couple pounds instead of that other one. It's more of a hassle where you gotta get in there with your ruler and everything else. Yeah, tighten that up and it's way tighter than it needs to be. Usually between 60 and 70, so we'll put her at 70. That way when it loosens up, it should be about perfect. We'll go ahead and loosen up this other one this time. That way it's uh, not as much tension on the belt. You don't want to break one of the cords. Run it for a minute. Too much. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up a little bit. Actually, then we'll just still a little too tight. There we go. Perfect. I always like to write my date on them because it's easier to keep track of. A lot easier to do when you're with the belts off than on, but they're dated now. Okay, there we go. So we'll go ahead and put that back together and see how it does. So we put her back to go go status, push to free. Go ahead and put the covers on. Make sure these contactors are okay. All of our cups are fine. Make sure we're not rattling into anything. Last thing we need is a refrigerant leak. This is a water cooled machine. Get your head pressure control valves right there, and the water goes right down the drain right there. got a lot of weight on top of this thing which is why it's having a hard time getting it into position 
All right, so let's see how that does. It probably don't help that they got this big, heavy, freaking thing up on top, which is a lot of the reason why I think it makes all the noise that it does. That thing weighs somewhere around probably 55 to 60 pounds or more. It's very, very heavy and it really is not good for it, but you know, whatever. Now what you can see on this possibly is the little air pockets there. This is way too much overrun. So they, uh, they may have not primed it properly. Just crammed a crap load of uh, air in there. I don't know what they did, but I know this ain't how I had it set up when I started up in 18, so um, it smells funny too. So I'm going to double check the air pumps, but yeah, it's fun things where it's, you know, they wanted to double check too while I'm doing the freezer, which uh, before I left to go get the belts, I found out that the um, pressure had dropped three pounds. So we're pulling a quick back on it. We're going to charge it up. Uh, I think he's going to end up probably getting a new one, so I'm not even going to waste time with dryers and all that. We'll clean off the front coil there, and then I'm going to scan it once i got real refrigerant in it instead of the nitrogen. That's a lot of the reason why it, uh, we couldn't find it. So as soon as we get refrigerant in it, we should be able to find the leak pretty quickly. So we need about 19 ounces in here. Get that zeroed out. Let's get this thing juiced. See what we pick up. Did not impress me much on the vacuum. That went awful quick. So 17, 18, one more ounce. There we go. Let's see how bad our head pressure is. We really need to get that coil cleaned off a little bit. It's kind of a wreck. The store's not open yet. They're getting ready for the season, so we've kind of got it to the place to ourselves. We don't have a lot of people in the way here. But yeah, it's it's really nice. It smells like strawberries. a little bit better. Still needs cleaned out. We can blast that out with some nitrogen. That completely finished out that bottle, but Seems like it got pretty decent without getting water all over the floor. And hopefully my Leatherman's still in there because I don't have it right now and I wanted to straighten those out. So we're gonna run this thing first and see what we get. This thing has got a capillary tube, and I'm not happy with what I'm seeing. It's getting really low. Filter dryer. It's not real big. We'll give it a little bit. Hopefully, the CPR is just cutting it back. But I have a feeling I'm going to add a little extra. That dryer might have been the factory one. It's hard to say. I'll watch it for a little bit here. But head pressure even looks a little bit low, honestly. So. Probably a little undercharged, would not surprise me. It was underneath there, thank goodness. 
I really like that Surge. I got the Leather Wave too, but Surge is just a big version of the uh, freaking uh, Wave with the uh, take your pick type of uh, blade you want to put in it for the uh, saw. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get that little last bit straightened out there and I'm checking my condenser temp area. We're at about 73. So we're going to probably have to add a little bit more to it. It's uh, not a real surprise when you know, it wouldn't be uncommon for those cap tubes to maybe have uh, buildup of wax and other things that happens generally from the compressor overheating and running when it has not enough refrigerant. Plus with it being 134A, it just has a tendency to do those wonderful things. So let's go ahead and finish straighten this out a little bit here. Then we'll be good to go. I'm gonna check my crankcase regulator here. Um, basically, I'm still running about a 10 pound suction there, get right around 10 pound suction there. So we're not getting any real drop off of that. Um, add a little bit of refrigerant to it. We're kind of getting close to our head pressure and we're like two. Two tenths around about 91 degrees and a negative 30, so the suction's still low. Let's go ahead and do a leak search real quick with the leak detector and see if it's going off in the evaporator. I'll have to shut her down for a minute. See if we can find anything in there. It's uh, not a real surprise, but whatever. It's the late, as low as that suction is, that's kind of scary. This is a capillary tube system and uh, he really hasn't had that many problems with it, but I guarantee you that stupid capillary tube's jacked up. I don't know how long they let it run like this, but I would suspect it was probably a few days, so yeah, or or longer, because nobody's been in here. All right, so we had to add about an extra 11 ounces to this thing to get it to the 225, 11 pound mark, and even a little 11 pounds it seems kind of low for my suction. Because it's a negative 27 degrees. We're running about a 96 degree condensing temperature. It's 74 in here, so 84, 94. We're only 21 degrees over ambient, which usually these run a little higher than most units. So I mean we're setting pretty decent there as far as you know it's operational. Um, our temperature is dropped already down to four temperature is already dropped down to 30 degrees area. So uh, we ran the air conditioner, which it's in need of tender loving care. So we're working that out now. The refrigerant on it was fine. We're getting a lot of this crud out of it right now. You can see the black crud that was coming out. So kind of rinse it off and rinse it back out again multiple times just to get it off the coil. So this is pretty much about done. We already washed the condenser there on the uh, walk-in cooler. Sight glass is full on it. So that's going to probably wrap this one up. Ain't real exciting, but this is the real life. Um, we'll let him know that you might as well plan on just replacing that unit. It's got a leak and it's got partial restriction going on with the cap tubes. But it'll at least work until he gets one in because who knows if anything's even available right now with the way everything's kind of been out of stock. All right, guys, if you like the video and you want to see more like it, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.